Hello and welcome to this video on what is an intra-class correlation. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, latent class analysis and multi-level analysis. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe to this channel. Also check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to address the question of what is an intra-class correlation coefficient. And I'm going to start with a conceptual explanation and then I will show you a little bit more of the equations and formalities behind this, but I promise it's not going to be too complicated. So what is an intra-class correlation? An intra-class correlation is a measure of between group variability or we could say of within group similarity. So where is something like that relevant? Something like that is relevant, for example, when you have a multi-level sampling design, when you have, for example, students nested within school classes so that you have groups in addition to individuals. So there might be a situation where students within the same school class are more similar to one another than to students who belong to other school classes. So then we can use the intra-class correlation coefficient of a measure of within school class similarity or uh, alternatively as a measure of between group variability, meaning variability between different school classes. Likewise, when you look at siblings, for example, or family members, then the family members within the same family may be more similar to one another than they are to members of other families. And again, we can use the intra-class correlation coefficient to measure that similarity. And then finally, one very common uh, area of application of the intra-class correlation coefficient is when you have a multi-rater design or a multi-method design where you use multiple reporters or multiple raters and you want to find out whether the raters reflect really differences between the target individuals that they are supposed to rate or whether there's more variability between the raters for the same target. So that wouldn't be a good situation if there was disagreement between the raters. If they differed a lot for the same target, then that's not what you want because then that would indicate a lack of convergent validity or a lack of inter-rater agreement and the intra-class correlation coefficient can again be used to measure similarity here between different raters and to measure inter-rater agreement. Now I want to show you an example from uh, multi-level designs where we have students nested within school classes. And so here I have an actual data example where students were tested with a math test and their math scores were recorded. You can see we had 36 school classes here. Those are shown on the x-axis. Each dot here in this plot recommends a school class specific mean. And then let's assume that the error bars here simply indicate the range of the scores within each school class. And so that way you can very easily see that we have two different sources of variability here. One source of variabil variability is in the individual scores around the school class specific means. So you can see not everybody in a given school class had the same score. So there was variability around the school class specific mean. For example, in the first class here, you can see the mean was about 10 or slightly below 10 and the range was from six all the way up to maybe 13. So there was quite a bit of variability around the group mean and that's the case for all of the school classes. Some school classes have a little bit less variability, others have more variability, but overall there is variability within groups, within school classes. In addition to that though, there's also considerable between groups variability. There are huge differences between the school classes. As you can see, there are some school classes that scored with an average near 25, where others scored with an average 
that was near seven. So that's a huge difference in the average math score between school classes. And so now we can use the intra-class correlation coefficient to measure in a single number how much of the variance or what proportion of the variance in math score ability was between school classes versus within school classes. In this example here, the intra-class correlation coefficient is 0.44. So what does this mean? This means that 44% of the variance in math performance here is due to differences between the school classes, and that's a huge amount. So this has to do with the fact that there's such a big scatter of the dots here across the uh, plot. So you can see these dots vary greatly between school classes, meaning the school class specific means show a lot of variability. And that's reflected in this intra-class correlation of 0.44. Now, how does this Again, how is this interpreted? The intra-class correlation is like a coefficient of determination or R-squared type coefficient in that it varies between zero and one. Zero means that there is no uh, variability between school classes. So if all school classes had the same mean, if there was no difference in math achievement across school classes, all the dots would be uh, parallel to the x-axis they would be on a horizontal line. And then in that situation, the intra-class correlation would be zero. The more the variability is due to between groups differences, the greater the intra-class correlation will be towards 1.0. And so here a value of 0.44 is already a very strong value for an intra-class correlation coefficient. Now notice that even though it's called an intra-class correlation, it's actually more similar to an R-squared type measure or coefficient of determination in that it gives us the variance that is accounted for or that is due to between groups differences in the same way as an R-square type coefficient in regression analysis would also give us the proportion of explained variance. Now let's go in a little bit more into the details. And let's figure out how do we get this value of 0.44? Where does the information come from? How can you see that it's 0.44 and not something else? So this has to do with the equation, obviously, the formula for the intra-class correlation coefficient, which is given as the sigma between groups, sigma squared, excuse me, so the variance between groups is in the numerator of this formula. And then in the denominator, you have the sum of the between groups variance component and the within groups variance component. And so that's how we get our 0.44. In our example, the uh, between groups variance estimate is 20.855 in our data, and the, the within groups variance component is 26.48. And so when we put that into the equation, then we get 0.44. Now, of course, the next question then is, where do you get these variance estimates from 20.855 and 26.48? Where do they come from? How do we get them? And so for that, it is useful to take a quick crash course in multi-level data analysis or multi-level modeling, specifically in a very, very simple type of multi-level analysis model that's called a random intercept model or a random effects model, we could say. So in a random intercept model, we have a level one equation, which is for the individual students in the school classes. So the level one is the individual level, in this case, the level of the students. And so in the level one model, you can see we have something that looks a little bit like a regression model. However, there's only an intercept and an error term in this regression. So here on the left hand side, we have our dependent variable, so to say our math score, where I indicates a student and J indicates a school class. So that's this math score of student I in class J. And we have a random intercept beta zero J. Notice that this is not a fixed effect, but it's a random effect. That's a difference between this model and a conventional 
ordinary least squares regression. Here the beta 0j can vary across school classes. That's why it's uh, printed in italics here and also why it has an index or subscript j for the school class because this intercept is specific to school class j or we could say can vary across school classes. And so in this model, this reflects the fact that the school class specific means can vary. So each class can have a different math score mean and that's measured by beta zero j. And then also we have an error term r i j. So that is the individual deviation of student i in class j from the group mean. So each student can have a score that deviates from the group mean as we saw previously with these error bars. The error bars showed us that there is a range of values around the group mean. So not every student has the same group mean and this term r i j, this error term, measures or reflects this deviation of an individual student's score from the group mean. Next is the level two equation. The level two here is the level of the school classes or groups, that's the group level. And so on the group level, the random intercept from level one, beta zero j, is broken down into the grand mean, gamma zero zero. Notice that this is a fixed effect, so it's not italicized because this is a fixed coefficient that takes on one and only one number. And that's the grand mean, the overall mean across all school classes. And then we have U0J as well, which is an error term that characterizes the deviation of a school class specific mean from the grand mean, because each school class can have a different group mean, and that group mean can then obviously differ from the grand mean. So U0J characterizes that deviation of a specific class specific mean from the grand mean or overall mean. And so this model we can put together, then we have a combined or mixed effects model with both random effects and fixed effects. And you can see then we have that um, an individual score of student i in class j is broken down into the grand mean plus the deviation of the group mean from the grand mean plus the deviation of the individual score from the group mean. And that's, that resembles what you might have seen in terms of an analysis of variance, specifically a random effects analysis of variance. It's a random effects an ANOVA model here because the groups are not specific. So those school classes are randomly selected from a whole universe of school classes. They don't reflect specific treatment groups or specific schools or specific school classes. They were simply randomly selected from the universe of school classes in this example. And therefore it's a random effects analysis of variance in contrast to a fixed effects ANOVA where you have specific groups like males and females or therapy versus no therapy that you would compare. So this random effects ANOVA model or random intercept model allows us to determine those variance components that go into the intra-class correlation coefficient. And so specifically here I um, listed the estimates for this model in our example. The grand mean here gamma zero zero is 11.934. So that's the overall constant, the overall mean across all school classes. That's not relevant as a variance component. It's not a random effect. It's a fixed effect. But we also get the variance of u zero j as a parameter estimate that's equal to our sigma squared between groups. So that is what goes into the numerator of our intra-class correlation coefficient, 20.855. That variance component characterizes the variance in the group means around the grand mean or between groups variability. Also, we get an estimate for the variance of Rij and that's equal to our sigma squared within groups. That's the variance in the individual scores around the group means. So that characterizes variability within school classes. And here is 26.48. And then we can plug these numbers into our formula for the intra-class correlation coefficient like we've already done and we get 0.44. Now, where do you get estimates like that? You can get them in any program that is capable of handling multi-level modeling or 
uh, hierarchical linear modeling, SPSS does it, for example. There are also programs like HLM and there is also M plus that does it. And so here I used M plus to estimate those random and fixed effects. You see the output here with the parameter estimates from M plus in the first column, you have the estimate at the within level, you get the variance of R I J. So that's the within level or within groups variance component 26.48. At the between level, you get the variance of U zero J. So that's the variance of the group means around the grand mean 20.855 and you get the grand mean gamma zero zero, which here is 11.934. Also, I asked for the intra class correlation coefficient as a separate parameter in M plus. You don't have to do that. M plus will automatically give you the intra class correlation coefficient when you run a multi level model. However, you don't get a standard error and a p-value normally when you just go with the M plus default option. And so here I defined the ICC as a new or additional parameter in M plus with a standard error, a test statistic, and then also a p-value. So I can test whether the intra-class correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero. In addition, I can then also ask for a confidence interval in M plus. And so you can see it down below, there are different confidence intervals for the intra class correlation coefficient in the middle we again have our point estimate 0.441 and you can see that to the left and to the right of the point estimate we have the boundaries of a 90% confidence interval and then Next to that, we have the limits of a 95% confidence interval under lower 2.5% and upper 2.5%. And then finally, we even get a 99% confidence interval at the very end of this confidence interval in M plus. I have a separate video in which I show how to do all this in M plus. So check that video out as well. Also, I offer workshops on multi level analysis in M plus if you're interested and Quantfish offers other workshops also on multi level analysis using other software programs. So don't forget to check out the description for those resources. And I hope you found this video useful and that I will see you again next time.